And we begin this half hour with the news that the Prime Minister, Boris Johnson, has now been discharged from hospital. As we've been reporting for the last few days, he's been treated here at St Thomas's Hospital in London and he's been paying tribute to the NHS staff who've been treating him for coronavirus, saying that he owes them his life. In Spain, the daily death toll fell again, confirming the belief the worst may have passed. As in some other countries, some minor relaxations are now being discussed, but no significant change. The cost has been terrible, and it's not over yet. At this hospital in Madrid, colleagues remember another nurse who died. The UK is about two weeks behind, and despite three weeks of lockdown, there is little prospect of any relaxation. Glorious spring sunshine for the Easter weekend, but many have heeded calls to stay in. Hospital admissions and infection rates may be slowing, but not the death toll. On Saturday, another 917 deaths were announced. New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, says that daily intensive care unit admissions are going down, possibly a sign that stay-at-home orders are having an effect and the worst may have passed. But he is stressing that the state is losing lives quickly. All of this while other states still haven't hit their peak. This morning, with more than half a million coronavirus cases in the U.S. and growing, New York State may be seeing results after weeks of social distancing and stay-at-home orders. The number of ICU patients falling for the first time since the pandemic began, an encouraging sign. We are cautiously optimistic that we are slowing the infection rate. Now, with evidence of a flattening curve in some states, President Trump is looking to create a task force focused on reopening the country. It's the biggest decision I'll ever make. South Korea will be launching a special body comprised of government officials and civilian experts this week to help support the early development of treatments and a vaccine for COVID-19. The top office said Sunday that the team will be overseeing the developments of treatments and vaccines and will be making swift decisions to clear obstacles along the way. Making up the team will be top officials from the ministries of health, science, finance, SMEs and food and drug safety as well as the Korea Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. This comes after President Moon Jae-in called last week for full governmental support for the development of treatments and vaccines. Blue House officials will also be launching a consultative body of their own to review relevant situations. Good Friday in the Kaza household took a turn for the worst. An enforcement patrol escalated and allegedly resulted in the loss of a life. Collins Kaza was enjoying lunch in this room when two women SANDF members entered the premises questioning him and his brother. His wife details the incident. They went inside and then they grabbed them outside from the house because they wanted to search if there is bears. They came with him here. They were looking for the bears. There was a box here. So they didn't find those bears. They only found one. It was only empty. So they took him outside and he was like, no, you can't take me outside because you didn't find what you were looking for. A stickler for tradition, the Queen has broken one by giving her first Easter message. Her words of comfort coincide with the deaths of more than 900 Britons for the second consecutive day. The Queen guiding her kingdom after another devastating loss of life. We know that coronavirus will not overcome us. As dark as death can be, particularly for those suffering with grief, light and life are greater. Her Majesty is spending Easter at Windsor and, like many, away from most of her family and friends. By keeping apart, we keep others safe. 
But Easter isn't cancelled. In a shocking incident from a north Indian state of Punjab, police officers were attacked by a group of men when they were asked to produce their curfew passes. One attacker, in fact, chopped off a police officer's hand in broad daylight. The men were asked to stop their vehicle at a checkpoint near a market in Patiala. But instead, they crashed their truck through the barricades set up by the police. The group then proceeded to attack the officers on duty. One of the assailants was carrying a sword, which he used to chop off the hand of a police officer on duty. You can see the police officer lying on the ground. The officer is currently at a hospital in Chandigarh receiving treatment. Mild earthquake tremors were felt in the national capital region. The magnitude recorded is 3.5 and the epicenter is New Delhi. Well, yes, sir, uh, an earthquake measuring 3.5 on the Richter scale uh, struck uh, uh, Delhi. The, the depth was 8 kilometers. The exact time when the earthquake struck was 5, uh, 45 uh, and 3 seconds. That was the time when the earthquake struck. It's not rare that... Uh, uh, the epicenter is Delhi, but uh, uh, the epicenter was Delhi. And one thing I can tell you that because of the fact that uh, this is the Himalayan range, uh, uh, the entire Indian subcontinent has a history of devastating earthquakes. At least 31 residents from a private care home in Montreal have died in the last month. Five were confirmed with COVID-19. Today, Premier Francois Legault ordered a criminal investigation. The owner of this residence refused to give us access to the file of the patients. And it's only last night at 8, 8 p.m. that we learned that the number of deaths since March 13 was 31. A body is removed from Heron residence in Dorval, Quebec on Saturday, one of more than two dozen people to die inside the private senior's residence since March 13th. Weeks into the pandemic, health officials confirmed what many Iranians feared. The coronavirus had been spreading through the population undetected since January, the month before the parliamentary election. There is little doubt now the election contributed to the spread of the virus. Days after the first cases were confirmed in the city of Khum on February 19th, Iran's deputy health minister showed obvious symptoms during a media briefing, later confirming he was infected. In the days that followed, COVID-19 spread quickly through the ranks of government. Still, President Hassan Rouhani initially downplayed the crisis. During the first meeting of a task force he set up to respond to the outbreak, he predicted the emergency would be over in a matter of days. Iran's enemies are plotting to scare our society and push the country towards a shutdown. As of Saturday, everything should return to normal. Two months in, the government reports thousands are dead and tens of thousands infected. Iran has asked the International Monetary Fund for a $5 billion emergency loan to fight the virus, 